pandemic has torpedoed yeah. every other economic program uh, that was set mm. on the basis of uh, a non-COVID environment. Yes, you, you so say we all things <laughs> being equal. <but> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we must really reimagine. And, and uh, those of you who are in charge of government, <laughs> there is a sense in which we must also sympathize because we still expect yeah. uh, the same results as if COVID did not happen. But I look at just the airport environment where one travels now. Yes all the shops in the airport gone which means that the chain yeah. that supported the businesses are impacted negatively that's right what then and how then uh, can we recapture that so that a multi-billion industry which is the aviation industry uh, coupled with the advertisement industry right. coupled with food coupled with all the other things in reimagining Africa and our countries how are we going to attack that area it requires a very innovative thinking you're right prof mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, you know you just take the tourism industry mm. because a lot of the travel you know had to do with business tourism you know uh, that gave countries mm -hmm. uh, support mm -hmm. and we were and still are wanting to improve our tourism industry in this country mm -hmm. but you have such countries like where you come from yes. Kenya yeah where you would have two million visitors absolutely easily and then turn to 800 yes just if, look at even less <laughs> even less so yeah. just look at what has been lost yes uh, in, in uh, that impacts an economy not um, in a small way yeah here of course i have been in office um, about 10 months now mm. but you talk about expectations yes oh they way up here yeah and, uh, and then you say how do we do this we promise young people jobs yes but companies are closing. Yes. People are being laid off. It's something that every one of us has to soberly consider and says, um, let's, let's imagine something yes. more. And I'm encouraged by the young people. Yes. They're in a very spirit. Mm -hmm. Despite this, they are creating um, solutions that even within the COVID context. Yes gives you hope mm -hmm. that they can create jobs they can uh, uh, you know uh, create uh, answers yeah. um, the innovation that um, uh, students university yeah but you would be surprised even those on the street yes they could be dropouts but i'm telling you they got something up here absolutely so i think we'll be more you know listening more not necessarily to the economic in quote experts end of quote mm. but to those who are seeking daily answers yes and then say if you found a solution here maybe we can share that solution with the rest yes and then more have hope for a future that says hey we cannot be defeated by a plague of this magnitude however big it is uh, I think humanity has more within itself that that which can destroy it outside there you know your excellency i was thinking i'm i'm, I'm informed that you'd assume the chair of sadak <laughs> 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 and and uh, to me going forward it is the bigger markets uh -huh. that are going to be the game changers yes in terms of if you look at sadak easily anything up to 200 million so that one of the things that I think, and I hope that during your tenure, this is one of the things you'll focus on. If you allow labor to move freely, then it has a catalytic effect yeah. on innovation, on very primary things. And one of the things that comes to mind is agriculture, because the right. single thing that we must do is to continue eating. 
<laughs> regardless. That's right. And and I was saying that uh, if if the saying is true that uh, the fish uh, rots from the head, it must also be true that it freshens from the head. <laughs> and if that be true, therefore. One of the things that we must, you particularly in your privileged and honored position, is to see how we could move labor. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had young, a young person yesterday wanted to travel from Johannesburg to Windhoek. Mm -hmm. He couldn't yeah. uh, because of the typical uh, protocols. Right. But if you could, of course, appreciating the protocols that are now necessitated by COVID, ensure that young people can move we re-examine uh, the work permit environment, yes. you will be amazed at how what appears to have been lost can be regained by having a totally different approach. And the same can yeah. also be done in the context of East Africa, ECOWAS, Central mm -hmm. Africa, and ultimately the Africa continental free trade area. Right. And, and uh, if we did that in the next five years, the jobs lost in one sector will be gained in another sector. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a privilege for me, actually, to be taking over the uh, chairmanship of SADC um, in August, mm -hmm. the Lord willing, this year. But you're right. In terms of trade, um, we have protocols that have been in place and sometimes have not been truly used to uh, optimize people's profits um, as we have tried to work together. We will need to intentionally, yes. intentionally make sure that even the exchange of labor mm -hmm. is not just on the unskilled level. Yes. It is on a level that says people can freely move and be accepted. Yes. We are sometimes more willing to give temporary employment permits to what we call expats. Yes. And they are not those that look like us. Eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have plenty. Uh, in Southern Africa, for example, uh, we've always had uh, labor move around. Yes. But it must be on a level that nobody suspects every other one when movements of people like this take mm. place. And usually it is because of political uh, issues. Mm. If we look at our people as, as one, and uh, Africa as one, and nations that are there as, you know, one nation, like a, a chain in a link. Every strong nation will make the African chain yes. stronger. And so the trade agreements, bilateral and sometimes multilateral, mm -hmm. and what Africa, uh, continental free trade area, will signify it's not just protocols on paper. Mm. We must have, even like now, we are creating uh, what we call one-stop uh, border posts. Yes. Somebody says, let's call them one go yes. uh, border posts. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so people don't talk about stopping, yes. but they talk about how freely it is uh, we are enabled to go. Yes. And, um, and, and trade amongst ourselves, create more jobs amongst ourselves in the area of agriculture, like you have rightly mentioned, mm. because food is the biggest business. And uh, people shouldn't look at it as just a mere cause for subsistence. It is the biggest business and we will always need it. Mm. And so Africa has so much arable land Yes. that we can not only just feed ourselves as Africans, we can feed the rest of the world. Yes. And then look at the whole issue that uh, COVID-19 has kind of exposed in the area of pharmaceuticals yes. and, 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 yeah. and medicine development. Yeah. Why are we looking to others uh, to be the ones that supply, um, you know, vaccines? Yes. 
Um, and our leaders on the continent have now begun to say, no, let's encourage our young people. Um, and our uh, uh, researchers uh, to do what we can do for ourselves as Africa. In fact, Your Excellency, there's something that I think is very critical. You remember in the early days, mm. the people of Madagascar came up with COVID organic. That's right. And I thought uh, the Malagasy Institute of Applied Science. And one of the areas in which Africa does not do very well is to invest in research and development. Mm -hmm. So that many of our universities have become glorified high schools. It's chalk and board. Yeah. You don't have money for academics to engage in serious right. research. Right. And I think with the anchorage of South Africa, which technologically is above the parapet in this region. Right. One of the things, and I hope that they'll provide leadership in this regard, is to then marshal Africa, because I saw that it's South Africa, Egypt, and Morocco, mm -hmm. and uh, Senegal, the Louis Pasteur Institute, that now have the capacity to catalyze the process of vaccine development. Right. And if Cuba can do it, Your Excellency. <laughs> you know, and look at the size. Yeah. You know, so it's not necessarily, you know, yeah. it's how, not the size how of big the you are, how back. small you are, yeah, yeah. but how big your heart is mm. uh, toward finding solutions yeah. uh, that will be of uh, uh, benefit to mm. humanity. Yeah. And we can do that. Some of us, particularly with the young people that we work with across the continent, mm -hmm. in, in little ways uh, to make the ocean will be the little bubble, <laughs> to make the forest the little tree, uh, so that we can help yes. uh, to contribute to that agenda. Yeah, I, I think in terms of principles that mm. you can abide by, mm. um, the high five would be, you know, servant leadership, uh, uniting a nation, making sure everyone prospers, and making sure that we fight vices such as corruption, mm -hmm. and then follow the rule of law. Uh, you, you always have to tweak the application of this thing. Yes. Uh, when we spoke about these things, it was in a non-COVID context. <laughs> yes. And all of a sudden, COVID hit us. But this is, I think, an area in which now you can demonstrate what being a servant really means. Yes. Or how multilateralism, which is creating synergy amongst different partners, really means to be united to conquer an enemy that is threatening all of us. And then how important it is to make sure that even within that context, everyone benefits and continues to grow yes and prosper but like it has been demonstrated and i have had to uh, deal with this and i'm we're still dealing with it and it is painful mm -hmm. covid 19 funds have been abused yes but you have to deal with this because it's an opportunity now to say, let's do what is right. And not just restrict it to a COVID fund. Yes. What about the other funds? What about all of the infrastructural uh, developmental funds that were meant to benefit people and have been abused and used by a few? What about all of the uh, areas in which um, Africa, if truly uh, following the path of integrity, Africa would be where, uh, you know, everybody would be saying, uh, let's look up to Africa Absolutely. for the world solutions. And we happen to be at the very bottom, despite all of the resources we have and all of the uh, brilliant minds that we have. These young people are teaching me something, mm. uh, Prof, that uh, gives me hope mm. that, uh, you know, following principles, following uh, values, following something that will give your life meaning, you could still change uh, a nation and you can still change a <coughs> continent. Your Excellency will, I am no doubt I've seen, <laughs> you, you, your administration through you took uh, 
very drastic action and and known or unknown to you you may not believe it it has energized africa in a very unique way mm. because as you rightly said the funds were, that were meant to be deployed for COVID or in the fight against COVID have been embezzled across the continent. And what people have been waiting for is resolute action. And what we have seen and have read the newspapers today is that people are being called to account. And I think that is what Africa needs. And it yes. ought not to be restricted to COVID, as you said. You've right. got to look at different areas. And, and if we were to deal with wastage and outright theft, Right. A friend of mine calls it, he says it is not corruption, it is, it is theft on an industrial scale. <laughs> and, and if you are to tame it, and one of the things that I think is very critical in the fight against corruption is lifestyle audits. Yes. It, to ensure, if you earn 100,000 kwacha, really there is a limit to what you can do. If, if you are doing things that are monumentally beyond those, right. <laughs> then, and then people even, <laughs> even the law and those who are administering law must now change that we might think that you are guilty until you are proven innocent in these very unique circumstances. Uh, 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 and, 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 and I think that what has happened in the action taken by your administration is to create a momentum yeah. on whose crest <coughs> Uh, a lot can be done going That's forward right. because that money would then go into health, it yes. would go into agriculture, it and would education. go into education, in infrastructure, ah. and, and liberate us from foreign debt. That's I mean, right. Yeah, foreign debt. We borrow because, because we steal. <laughs> Sometimes we yeah. have stolen and stashed in different countries. If we could keep it in the domestic arena. So I think uh, that you have a duty uh, an obligation uh, which is uh, entrusted to you by the people of Malawi and yes. of course right, progressively now the people of Africa to be the arrow's head in a manner of speaking in, in carrying this crusade. Mm. My experience is that you make many enemies in this war <laughs> but, <laughs> but yet it becomes necessary at times because uh, those yeah. enemies thus created when they are alone and they inspect their hearts and minds, they know that the right thing was done. That's true, yes. and um, it, it is a humbling duty, mm -hmm. but one has to face it. Mm -hmm. And as a servant, you don't even expect to be thanked for it because you have just done what your duty demanded. Mm -hmm. um, somebody, you know, coined a phrase here uh, years ago that uh, what is happening seems like you know government has become a criminal enterprise yes. <laughs> and um, research has shown over the years that even with outside budgetary support and what you see being looted it's about a third of the budget a country like Malawi needs <coughs> And so if you didn't steal, if yeah. you didn't misappropriate funds, mm -hmm. then you didn't need outside budgetary support yes. because that would make up for it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these are things that sometimes we talk about, but we don't act on. For example, we do have a legislation that should lead everyone um, into following up on the audits, yes. uh, personal lifestyle audits. And sometimes you just wonder why we don't pursue that route. Mm -hmm. um, of course, our system here is like, uh, uh, based on the old British system yeah. where everyone is innocent until proven Proven's guilty. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you, still, <laughs> you still have to respect that. Yeah, which is but, true. Uh, but I tell you what, yeah. um, I, I think with a resolute mind, and, and, and whatever they call political will, yes. um, we can get to a place where resources are truly used for the common good yes. or public interest yes. rather than personal interest. You know, Your Excellency, political will is actually the game changer. And 
anti-corruption authority yeah. can do all it wants, the judiciary can do what it wants, everybody else, but where there is political will, yeah. that energizes a country in a totally different way, way. And of course, as you rightly said, people will be presumed innocent until they are proven guilty. Yeah. But if these agencies are reasonably well resourced, right. it improves the quality of investigation, That's right. improves the quality of prosecution, the judiciary, judiciary is properly resourced, and you will be amazed. I once said when <laughs> in my earlier days that if you jail a high-ranking public official, it is more than public education for 10 years because it sends a very strong message that there are no sacred cows. Mm. And, and I think that that is what Africa needs. Yes. And if that happens and is replicated, then we would save anything in the neighborhood of even one trillion United States dollars within, within the continent. The continent. And, and you can imagine what then it does yeah. to all critical sectors in African economies. And, and when you talk about mm. the whole of Africa as a mm. continent, monies that flow out of Africa. Yes. <laughs> are actually uh, much more than monies that come in in yes. terms of developmental mm. aid or assistance. Yes. And so that tells you something. Yes. Africa is so rich that if Africa together would say, folks, let's determine our own future. Mm. Let's have our own vision. And like it is being demonstrated even now in terms of trade. Yes. If we do that, then nobody outside us will be determining what yes. we need. Uh, if they want to help, they will assist alongside what we have said. Absolutely. Not in terms of laying conditions that, you know, Africa, if you want to uh, prosper, advance, or industrialize, this is what you've got to follow. Mm. We will be determining what Africa needs. And I believe that, um, you know, the dreams of our forebears were not in vain. Yeah. We need a generation that rises up and says, let Africa take charge. Absolutely. And you know, Your, Your Excellency, another area that, uh, that ought to receive attention is the area of innovation and invention. In, in all That's its it. permutations, because these young people at the universities are capable of intervening in yes. different areas. Take the area of agriculture. Everybody now knows that rain-fed agriculture yes. is not the way to go. That's true. The question is, how are we enabling our young men and women at our universities of agriculture? What about the arts? I was <laughs> just thinking yes. about the arts. Uh, uh, it's in, big business. <laughs> big business. Football is big business. Yeah. Music is big business. Cinema is big business in, in the billions. That's right. And, and I believe that these are the unique areas now which Your Excellency uh, would use your privileged position both as the President of the Republic of Malawi and when you assume the chair of SADC mm. uh, to articulate and make Malawi, the warm heart of Africa, be a Thank place that, that welcomes us. So that some of us who believe that in Malawi is not landlocked, it is land linked. Link. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Can now come here. It could become the hub yes. of the kind of innovation and creativity that yes. young people can Absolutely. champion. Yeah. And I, because I, 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 I have known a little bit mm. about the mentorship program that you champion mm. across the continent. Yes. And um, I want you to know that um, you are free to come to Malawi and make it the hub where you can operate and challenge these young people across the continent to say, let's find our own solutions and we will rely on your brains. Or to use uh, uh, a phrase that I heard from um, uh, Dr. Adesina, you know, yes. uh, he, he says uh, this is uh, uh, white matter yes. uh, infrastructure <laughs> development. <you know? laughs> so, so the brain must yes. uh, be exercised in, in a way that is beyond what people expect. Yes. And these young people, yes. 
not only do they think outside the box, I think they have thrown out the box. Yeah. And they just said, just think. Perhaps you don't need the box. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you don't need the limit. Yeah, because the box limits you. Yeah. And, and uh, as a student of philosophy, you know, the René Descartes, cogito yes. ego sum. That's I right. Think, I think so I am. And, and, and Your Excellency, I think part of the frustration, particularly of young Africans, yeah is that they are not enabled. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is perception. Right. But I think that deliberate effort must be made now because this is a very young continent and That's I believe right. that that is also true of the Republic of Malawi. The average age possibly it's, is 18. It's young people. And, and, and if we don't take care of them, what we think will be a youth dividend could be a youth crisis. Yeah. And. Uh, Fortune favors the vigilant. We've got to be vigilant now and deliberately go out there and, and root for young people. And under our mentorship program, that is exactly what we intend to do. And I'm very pleased that uh, you are giving us the opportunity in Malawi to come and work with young people here. And come, we will. Uh, Thank you. Come, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think, I think uh, we, just, we just need, for those of us, who had been given a chance when we were young. Yes. And now we act like, you know, we can't return that favor. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's wrong. Mm. I think we will need to create the kind of environment that frees these young people to become better than their best. You know, there's a phrase that I, I heard from Jesse Jackson in the United States uh -huh. that if don't look at a person who is down unless you want to raise him up. There and you go. I thought that that was very powerful. There you go. Yes. Because many times as politicians mm. we have wanted our people hungry, we have wanted our people ignorant and poor so we can manipulate them. Yes with the vicious cycle of election after election. Mm. And I, I said, I don't subscribe to this kind of belief mm. and, uh, you know, system. Let the people have what it takes. Let the people be conscientized to where the, when they make a decision, it is an informed decision. Correct. And let the young people lead a new generation. I call it a, a new breed that has no greed. Yes. And transform the face of Africa, but it needs to start with me mm -hmm. and with us in this country and each country. And I have hope that what you are investing in, Thank you. Um, in, in making sure that the next generation has a worldview different from the present one, I think we will have Africa transformed. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. God bless you.